In this lecture, we will prove the Hausdorff Young inequality using the Ristorin uh, convexity theorem. So, we will we'll start with the proof of the Ristorin using the uh, three lines lemma we did in the last class. Okay? So, let me write Ristorin again. <coughs> So, I have linear operator T uh, is P0 Q0 type right, with norm M0 and it is also P1 Q1 type with norm M1, then T is PT QT type. Okay. Uh, where 1 by p t equal to 1 minus t by p 0 plus t by q 0 q by t by p 1 and 1 by q t is 1 minus t by q 0 plus t by q 1 with norm with norm less than or equal to m 0 to the 1 minus t m 1 to the t. Okay. So, in other words log norm t is a convex function, okay. so, convex function. Also remember the picture that tells you why, what is convexity about it, right. So, I have 0, 0, I have 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1. So, if I take any point 1 by p 0, 1 by q 0 and some other point 1 by p 1, 1 by q 1, when I join the line any point here gives me 1 by p t, 1 by q t. Okay. So, the, the, the set where t is p q type p q is a convex set, right? because any two points I can join the line by restoring convexity there. So, if you plot all the points where t is bounded, that should give me a convex set. Okay, that is why it is called a convexity theorem. So, we use the three lines lemma. So, proof of this. So, we have to bring in complex analysis, right? We have to bring in holomorphic functions and so on. So, we construct them. Okay, so, let us start with a simple observation. So, if, uh, if f and g are simple functions, so remember everything is happening on LP spaces, right? We have two LP spaces. So, we have LP of x f x mu, L q of y f sub y nu, right? Both sigma finite measure spaces and so on. So, we are taking simple functions on x and simple functions on y. So, on, on x and y respectively, okay? So, I can write them. Uh, as linear combinations of right so it's summation aj chi ej j equal to 1 to some, some m and i can write g as summation uh, j equal to 1 to let's say n bj chi fj right these are simple functions so i'll, I'll need to write them appropriately so well, what are E j and F j? E j are disjoint sets. So, E j, e j will be in, in the first sigma algebra because your F is defined on x and I can assume them to be disjoint, right? Otherwise, I can disjointify them. Similarly, this functions F, this sets F j would be, uh, yeah, F, well, maybe I, let me use k here so that, uh, we do not get confused between the indices. So, let us change it to k, where f k would be measurable sets in y, right. So, this would be in, sorry, did I use script f? Yeah, ok. So, script f, right, and disjoint, of course, we can always disjointify them. So, two simple functions, ok, and we take them to be in, so what are we trying to do? We are trying to prove that 
T is PT QT. What does that mean? If I take a function in L PT, apply T to it, I should get a function in L Q T and the norm of that should be bounded by the norm of whatever is on the other side, right? That is what you mean by the operator is bounded from PT to L P T to L Q T. So, I, I take this simple function such that such that f belongs to well it is a simple function. So, it is you know as long as these have finite measure it will be in all L p, but let us take f to be in L p t of mu with the L p t norm equal to 1. Okay. Similarly, g not in L q t well it should be in L q t prime where well I will we'll see why where 1 by q t plus 1 by q t prime equal to 1. Okay. And the norm is so I will assume that the g norm is also 1. Okay. We need to show that well, what do we need to show? We need to show that I apply t to f okay right so this is a function in lpt i apply t to f i'll get something what do i want to show i want to show it is in qt lqt right so i apply t to this take the lqt norm that should be less than or equal to some constant times the lpt norm of f which is 1 right so some fixed constant right but how do i get the lqt norm of tf well, I uh, integrate against things in the conjugate uh, LP space, right? So, Tf I take, Tf is a, remember T is a function which takes functions on x to functions on y, right? Because it, it is bounded on LP naught to LQ naught. So, P is here and Q is here. So, any function here is taken to a function here. So, it is function on y, right? So, Tf is a function on y. So, I multiply it with g which is a function on y okay, of this property. So, I can integrate over y right. This modulus if I show that is less than to some constant right that will do. Well, not the constant because we need um, uh, we need this bound right. So, not an arbitrary constant we need exactly the norm bound ok. So, let me write down that. So, if I show that this is less than or equal to m naught times 1 minus t to m 1 to the t, then we are done. Is this clear to you? I want to estimate the norm of t f, right. The norm of t f is given by integration against g, take the supremum over g where g runs over this unit ball right. So, so this is because the L p t norm of T f ok this is equal to supremum over uh, T f integrated against g right over all g whose norm is less than or equal to 1 right. So, whose q t uh, so, I want to look at the L q t norm of T f right and then say that it is less than or equal to L p t norm of f, but that is given by you integrate this function against functions in the dual space right. Dual space is q t prime right and you look at all those functions whose norm is less than or equal to 1, take the supremum this will give me this. So, if I prove this I can take supremum over g whose norm is 1. I will get right. So, this is simply L q t norm right and if that is less than or equal to m 0 to the 1 minus t m 1 to the t for all f right that is a simple function with the norm 1 that will tell me norm of t is less than or equal to m 0 to the 1 minus t m 1 to the t is this clear ok. So, I need to show just this right this is so this comes from the three lines lemma you have seen that okay. so let us do that.
So, what we do is we embed that value T f integral integral of T f with g into a holomorphic function. So, that that particular value will be exactly the value at the point t and at the point t we have m 0 to the t m 1 to the minus t or whatever that expression is right which should come from 3 lines lemma. Okay, so, so let us define holomorphic functions define f z f sub z equal to uh, ok. So, now comes more sorry I should have said this earlier uh, I can write a j a j are complex numbers right. Similarly, b k are complex numbers I can write this as mod a j times e to the i theta j right. Similarly, here I can write this as mod b k times e to the i phi k. Okay. So, keep the notation in mind j is for f, k is for g, theta for f, phi for g. Okay. So, no. yeah. because we need all that to define. So, a j I simply write as modulus of a j times its argument. Okay. So, there is something uh, non trivial there, but I want to use all that to define the holomorphic functions. So, summation j equal to 1 to uh, m ok right a j is this mod a j times. So, let us put e to the i theta j in the first part mod a j. So, it is not mod a j it is going to be mod a j to the p t times. So, it might look very complicated, but it is actually very simple uh, it will take a second to understand that it is actually simple ok chi e j ok and g z looks a bit more complicated than f z because this is in the dual space. So, k equal to 1 to n right ok mod so e to the i phi k mod b k to the q t by q t minus 1 times 1 minus 1 minus z by q 0 plus z by q 1. Okay. So, this as I said will look very complicated compared to the other one, but it is it is because it comes from the dual space. Okay. So, we will we will see this immediately. Okay. As of now, do not worry too much about these expressions. So, what are we doing? We have f and g, we modify them so that we get holomorphic functions. Okay. So, I am sure this looks sufficiently complicated, right. Well, what is happening? What is p t? Well, p t is some point, right. What happens to, so this by now you should be familiar with this right 1 minus t by p 0 plus t by p 1. If I put z equal to t what will I get 1 minus t by p 0 plus t by p 1 that is 1 by p t 1 by p t will get cancelled. So, I have mod a j this this and f. So, at the point t f z is f ok. So, f sub t is my function f there right because at at t 1 minus t by p 0 plus t by p 1. So, that is 1 by p t 1 by p t and p t gets cancelled. So, I have mod a j e to the i theta j that is simply a j chi e j that is f right. So, one function f is made into a holomorphic function. So, that at one point it satisfies the first one. We do the same thing with g let us see what happens to g at t. Well, at t I have 1 minus t by q 0 plus t by q 1 that is 1 by q t 1 minus 1 by q t that is 1 minus q t by q t or whatever right. So, that gets cancelled right. So, I will have mod b k n. So, um, well here it should be 1 minus q t right. 
this gives me 1 by qt, oh, sorry, no qt minus, so it is correct, sorry, yeah. So, so qt minus 1. Right. At t, this is 1 minus 1 by q t. So, q t minus 1 by q t, they get cancelled and I have exactly g. So, g sub t is simply g. Okay. They are holomorphic, right. Mod a j is a positive function and I am taking the powers with z. So, that is holomorphic. Similarly, this is holomorphic. I am adding finitely many of them, they are holomorphic. So, in z they are holomorphic right for remember there are values right so i should write f of x here and g of y here and i will have an x here and i have a y here right these are the functions right for each x and y these are holomorphic in z okay so we have brought in holomorphic functions now we apply t okay okay so we have this so let us let's write down the function and then we will see so define, we want to apply three lines lemma, right. So, define f of z to be integral over y t of f sub z g d nu, g z d nu, right. These are functions on, this is a function on x. So, I can apply t to it. All the complications are here, okay. But these are simply integrator functions, there is no problem. So, t goes inside, right? These are, these are constants for t, as far as t is concerned, these are constants. So, t applies here. So, t of chi ej is some function in somewhere, right, in LQ and what not, and this stays as it is. So, it is still holomorphic, and g is holomorphic. So, when I multiply, I get holomorphic uh, functions, but then it is a function on y, I integrate it. Holomorphicity still stays, right. So, if you want, you can write down the whole thing. T applied on this would be this thing times T applied on chi j and integrating against G would be but T chi, I, chi j times some chi f k will come, that integral will stay, all this will come out, right. This has nothing to do with the integrals, right. So, it is a linear comp. So, this if you calculate will be a linear combinations of functions of this form and functions of this form, which is holomorphic, right. So, this is a holomorphic function, this is analytic, right. Wherever these are analytic, these are entire functions. So, there is no problem, okay. And f of t, what is f of t? t f t g t. Remember, f t and g t are given function. So, this is simply integral y t f g, right. So, what do we need to show? We need to show that this is bounded by a constant, right, that is what we want to do. So, we need to show that this holomorphic function has the bound mod f t less than or equal to whatever bound we want there, which is coming from 3 lines lemma, okay. So, we need, we need to show that mod f t is less than or equal to m 0 to the 1 minus t m 1 to the t, right. That is what we want, because f t is simply the integral whatever we are trying to estimate. So, now you see where the 3 lines lemma coming from, right. I have a holomorphic function, if I can get bounds on the line 0 and on the line 1, I will have the bound at t, right. That is what 3 lines lemma tells me. So, the line 0 will give me the bound from p 0 q 0, line 1 will give me the bound from p 1 to q 1 and then we apply that, okay. So, let us slightly messy, but uh, you know uh, idea of the proof is very simple. So, let us see what happens at the line 0 and line 1. So, we will get estimates for f at the line uh, x equal to 0 and x equal to 1, right. So, let us write. So, let us note this. So, note that, okay, when we apply f i y, right. So, I need to know what is small f at i y, I need to know what is small g at i y, right, and see where they belong to. So, f i y, so modulus of f i y, what is f z? f z is this. Remember, these are disjoint, okay. So, how does the modulus look like? So, this is my space x and I have disjointified it, okay. 
So, I have E 1 here, E 2 here, E 3 here, E 4 here, let us say like this. I have a function which is defined on this, right? Some value here, some value here, some value here, some value here. And I take the modulus, what will happen? It will be modulus of those values, right? So, modulus of this is simply modulus of all these values because these are disjoint, okay? So, mod f i y, what is that? Summation j equal to 1 to m mod a j. Ha, now, go back to whatever we did. This has modulus 1. Whenever I have purely imaginary terms, that will give me 1, right? So, I will have p t 1 minus x minus i y or whatever, right? So, but x is 0, so that goes away, i y goes away. Uh, so, only p 0 survives, is that correct? Yeah. So, p t by p 0 by e j. Is this clear? So, let us recall at i y, right? I am looking at f i y. So, z is simply i y. 1 minus i y by p 0 plus i y by p 1. And I take the modulus, remember any purely imaginary term goes away. So, that is i y goes away, i y here goes away, I have only p t by p 0. So, that is what is written here. And of course, this will belong to L p naught, right? Because when I take the p naught power, what do I get? I will get again use the disjointification. So, so let I have x. So, I have disjointified like this, let us say E 1, E 2, E 3, okay. On E 1, it is mod A 1 to the P t by P 0, right. On E 2, it is mod A 2 to the P t by P 0, etcetera. So, when I take the P naught power, these are disjoint, right. P naught power will be P naught power of this, this, this and so on. But that is mod a 1 to the p t, mod a 2 to the p t and so on, right. So, this is nothing but summation j equal to 1 to n. Well, so maybe I will write it down mod f y i y to the p naught, okay, equal to j equal to 1 to n, mod a j to the p t chi e j equal to mod f, that is our original function to the p t, right. too complicated just because these are all disjoint okay well let's let's see this again if i take the modulus of f that is simply taking the modulus inside because e j are disjoint so modulus of f is simply j equal to 1 to m mod aj chi ej mod f to any power will be simply mod aj to the same power chi ej Okay, that is all I am saying all this is just that. But what did we get? The L p naught power of some function is the L p t power of the function we started with. Remember this has norm 1. Okay. So, the L p naught power of f i y is 1. So, similarly you do the g calculation. So, g of i y. Okay modulus would be summation k equal to 1 to n mod b k uh, to the q t by 1 minus q t 1 minus 1 by q 0, right. In the earlier case we got p 0, but here I have 1 minus 1 by q 0 chi f k. Okay. So, it it bit complicated because of the dual space and so on. And let us take the power like this. So, one modulus g i y q naught prime. What is q naught prime? 1 by q naught plus 1 by q naught prime equal to 1. Okay. This would be equal to this would be summation k equal to 1 to n. Again, how do I take the power? 
well I simply take the power in the coefficient right because these are disjoint. Now when I take the power q0 prime that gets multiplied here okay. So what does that qt by 1 minus qt times uh, q0 minus 1 by q0 into q0 prime. Uh, what does q0 prime? Well q0 prime is q0 divided by q0 minus 1 right this is q0 prime okay. So, uh, so this goes away right this is 1 and I have simply qt by 1 minus qt but, but what, what is qt by 1 minus qt it is 1 by uh, sorry qt prime right or 1 by qt prime sorry. So, this is just mod a k qt prime chi f right. So, I mean the dual space of course you know because of the prime there is always some uh, messy number there ok. So, so now you see the analogy right at p naught I have p t at the other end q naught prime gives me q t prime. So, that the integrals are same right because we took f and g such that they have norm 1 right. So, these guys will have integrals 1 ok. So, now apply t right. Now, we have applied t and we have if we have bounds on f i y right we are trying to do that t f i y g i y then that will give me one bound for this right. Similarly, I do it at 1 plus i y I get another bound and that will give me a bound for f t right ok. So, hence hence mod f i y. So, this is what we are trying to do first this uh, well this is equal to modulus integral t f i y g i y right d nu ok. Well, everything is here uh, f i y I know what it is I apply t to it I know that f i y is in L p naught right because it is p naught integral is simply the integral of this which is 1. So, that is norm 1 right and similarly this belongs to the dual of q naught. So, so this belongs to so let us write down this belongs to L q naught this belongs to L q naught prime. Well, why does this belong to L q naught because this function belongs to L p naught. So, if I apply t I will go to L q naught because t is type p 0 q. And this by holders inequality will be less than or equal to norm of this and norm of this, but this is bounded there. So, that will give me m naught right. So, this is less than or equal to m naught because the norms are 1 right. This has if I integrate this I am getting the integral of this which is 1. So, L p naught norm of this is 1 L q naught prime of norm of this is 1. So, this thing is less than or equal to 1 times the norm of t which is m naught. And similarly, so now you know what to do at the other end do the same thing. So, f of similarly f of 1 plus i y is less than or equal to m 1 ok. So, if you use the same functions and do everything at the other end you will get exactly m 1. So, now we are done because I have a holomorphic function f right on the line 0 f i y is less than or equal to m naught on the line 1 f of 1 plus i y is less than to m 1 it is bounded it is continuous well bounded is something you have to check but that is trivial it is co continuous to the boundary. So, by 3 lines lemma I have this ok right. So, this now follows from 3 lines. three lines lemma ok and that is all we needed right. So, if I prove f t is less than or equal to m 0 to the 1 minus t m 1 to the t then what I am proving is that this integral in modulus is less than or equal to that constant remember what are f and g are f and g are arbitrary functions from L p naught and L uh, L p t and L q t whose norms are 1 right. 
So now I can take supremum over G with this property and then supremum over F with that property I will get the norm of T which is less than or equal to M0 to the norm. Is this clear? So we have proved restore in convexity theorem and Hausdorff Young follows from that immediately that we have just. So I will stop with one more application um, or maybe give, give it as an exercise or, or showing yeah okay. So uh, I will give the I will give one part as an exercise the other part is something which we already know but we will see how interpolation can be used in many other contexts. So example. Let us fix an f in L1, then look at the operator, consider the operator T sub f, okay. So what is T sub f? T sub f of any other function g is f convolved with g, so we defined convolution, okay. So depending on where g is, this is defined, right. So what do we know? We know that, we know that tf of g equal to f star g uh, will be in L1 if g is in L1, right. So if I convolve L1 with L1, I land in L1 and I also have the inequality. So uh, L1 norm of f star g this is equal to the norm of Tfg, right? This is less than or equal to L1 norm of f into L1 norm of g, right? So what that says is the norm of T sub f as an operator, right? Operator norm is less than or equal to L1 norm of f, right? That is what it says. And at infinity, L infinity, if you look, that is a trivial thing. If if g is in L infinity, then Tf of g, its L infinity norm, well, this is less than or equal to again L1 norm of f into L infinity norm of g by Holder's inequality. That is a trivial exercise. So this tells me that the L infinity norm of Tf, right, the operator norm, is less than or equal to L1 norm of f again. Okay. So, what do we have? Now we have a restore in convexity kind of thing. Tf is a bounded operator from L1 of Rn to L1 of Rn and it is also bounded from L infinity of Rn to L infinity of Rn, right. The operator is the convolution operator, right. Uh, Tf of f at g is f convolved with g, right. So, now we have two spaces where a bounded operator exists, we can ask can we apply restore in convexity. So let us draw the picture. So we have 0, 0, we have 1, 1, 1, 0 and 0, 1, right. Well, here it is type 1, 1, right. So here it will be type 1, 1 it is type infinity infinity that is 0 0 okay. So restoring tells me uh, you can join these two. So you take any point here I will have that type but any point here would be x x right because this is a diagonal. So any point here is going to be 1 by p 1 by p. So it is type p p. So if I fix an f in L1 the convolution will take L p to L p, okay. Exercise, proof what is known as Young's inequality, okay. So 1 by p plus uh, 1 by q minus 1 equal to 1 by r. So all the P, Q, R, everything should be between 1 and infinity, okay. Then L P involved with L Q is contained in L R, also boundedness, right. So, norm of 
f convolved with g the lr norm is less than or equal to lp norm of f into lq norm of g okay so you need to come to this kind of pqr by interpolating in various ways okay so so you can interpolate so you can look at various things you know about convolution right so you know that lp uh, l1 convolved with lp goes inside lp right that is what we just proved lp convolved with uh, or maybe lq convolved with lp goes inside uh, l infinity right where 1 by p plus 1 by q equal to 1 that also we know by holders inequality so so you can fix a function in lp right consider the operator from l1 to lp lq to l infinity that will be bounded so i have 1 p and q infinity and join the line you will get this right so whenever you have such situations you can interpolate so that's called young's inequality yeah all right so uh, we'll stop here uh, this sort of finishes the proof of of young inequality uh, in the next class we will start with harmonic functions and Poisson integrals okay